Hey guys, today I'm doing January favorites. These are my favorite videos to film, so I couldn't skip this. I actually tried to film this yesterday, but I wasn't feeling well at all. I had a horrible migraine, but I tried to film it anyway. The ring light was making everything ten times worse, and it made me nauseous because it was like straining my eyes to look into the ring light, and then I had to keep going out of frame and coughing and making gross noises. And I was like, but if I act like I'm not sick, then nobody's going to know that I'm sick. So I was like, you know just being weird like I was trying to act like I wasn't sick but it made me seem even more sick so um yeah I feel fine today feel better um but I did not want to be in front of my light so we're filming in front of a window with natural sunlight I hope that's okay I love the effect of the ring light but like sometimes it's just it's too bright and I can't do it so we're gonna skip the ring light today. First product that I wanted to talk about is the Nivea In Shower Body Lotion. Originally my grandma bought one of these bottles for my sister because my sister is just like me. She's like this dry, scaly creature and has horrible dry skin, just like me. Um, so my grandma bought this for her and I saw it in my sister's shower and then I used it. I was instantly impressed. Basically what this does is it forms a barrier on your skin and locks in the moisture from the shower. So you put this on in the shower. It's a really weird concept. You put this on in the shower, leave it on for like a minute to 30 seconds and then you rinse it off and then pat yourself dry when you get out of the shower and it feels like you already have lotion on but it's not sticky. So that's why I think it kind of like locks in the moisture from the water of the shower and then like puts that barrier on top and keeps you moisturized and hydrated. If you are extra dry like me, you will need to put on a little bit extra lotion on the parts of you that are extra dry. But really impressed with it. Kind of a really weird concept, but also really cool and I've really been liking it. I keep it in the shower, use it every time I shower. I love it. I'm back on the fake tan game. I love fake tan, but I jump on and off the train of fake tan. Like sometimes I really keep up with my fake tanning routine. Sometimes I don't keep up. Uh, sometimes I don't keep up with my fake tanning routine. And when I'm at my fairest, you guys are always leaving me comments like, "What happened to your skin? What did you do to yourself? Why is your skin so white?" That's my natural skin tone. My natural skin tone is very, very fair. It's very yellow. Um, if I don't fake tan and I don't see the sun for months, then I go back to my natural skin tone like everybody else. And yes, it probably is a lot more fair than most of you guys would expect, but I do have really fair skin. It tans really easily, but when it goes back to its natural state, very fair. But now I have a fake tan on, and the fake tan that I've been loving is this Bare Minerals Faux Tan Body. This is a really nice, like, you went out in the sun for a day type of tan. It's nothing too dark, so if you're looking for something super dark, then this probably isn't for you, but if you're more fair and you want just like a fake tan that's gonna look natural and nice, then this is so for you. I love this. This has a like really strong brown green undertone. You guys can see it's kind of that cola color. It is a lotion, so you can get away with applying with it with um, latex gloves, but I like to use a mitt just because I think that's the best application. Like I said, it's really natural, it's really nice, it's easy to use, so yeah, I've been loving this one this month. <laughs> this is the Amor Pacific Tinted Moisturizer. It's the Moisture Bound Tinted Treatment Moisturizer, so it's a tinted moisturizer, but it has a fancy name on it. First of all, this smells exquisite, like it just has like the lightest, most beautiful fragrance to it, and this is now my holy grail tinted moisturizer. I love this because it sets. It's not completely matte. It still has like a radiant, I would say like semi-matte finish, but it doesn't stay oily, which is like my biggest gripe with tinted moisturizers. I hate how they just stay oily and even if you put powder on top of them, they don't look nice because the oils in the tinted moisturizer kind of like break the powders down and then an hour later your face looks oily and gross and I don't even have oily skin. I have pretty dry combo skin but more on the dry side and tinted moisturizers just don't work for me. So whenever I see people using like tinted moisturizers I'm just like how do you get away with that? Like how do you get it to look nice for a long period of time? Because I never can, not anymore, because I have this. This is a really, really nice tinted moisturizer. It's actually what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing tinted moisturizer. It's awesome. I think tinted moisturizer is the best option for me during the daytime. And I've fallen in love with this. Like this is seriously just because of the way it wears throughout the day. It's awesome. Through it, it's awesome and it's 
I love it. Is that the second thing I've dropped in this video? Do I have carpal tunnel from editing? If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I love my Becca Skin Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal, and I have the Champagne Gold one, and I just like love those, and I've been talking about getting Moonstone, and... I got it. I had a gift card. That was my way of justifying getting it. And I love these Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors so much. Like, I think these are the best highlighting products I've ever used. Did I already tell you this one's in the shade Moonstone? I was rambling. But this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Moonstone. It's beautiful. It's a light, um, what do we want to call this? It's a light Moonstone. I don't know. It's just like a light, you know, ivory. And it's not quite as intense as opal it gives you like a gorgeous candlelight glow it's what i'm wearing as a highlight today and it's what i'm wearing as a highlight underneath um, both of my brow bones i've got some on the bridge of the nose cupid's bow chin a little bit on the forehead i just think these becca powders are so buttery and pigmented they blend out like a dream you can put them anywhere you want like you could put them on your collarbones your shin bones like these Shimmering powders have multi-purpose, multi-functions, multi-purpose. They're really gorgeous, best highlighters I've ever tried thus far. Next favorite is something that has changed my life, and it is gel manicures. I got myself a gel nail light, so a UV light. This is gel manicure that I'm wearing right now. It is red carpet manicure, red carpet ready just like a classic red. The gel nails last through a lot. I've only had to deal with like two chips. I seriously love them. The only thing is when they grow out, you do have like a little line of demarcation, but that's fine. That's whatever. My friend Megan and then my other friend Lauren were both like, you need to get a gel manicure because it's going to change your life. And it did change my life. Like once you go shellac, you will never go back. It is so much more convenient. And I know that UV lights are dangerous, so it's not for everybody. But if you guys would like a tutorial on how I do my gel manicure at home, then I will do that for you guys. This is the Zoeva 104 Buffer Brush. This is a flat top kabuki. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. You know what they are. It's just like a flat top kabuki, typically used for applying foundation and concealer. Well, buffing out concealer, things like that. I have used this every day this month. My Beauty Blender is still brand new in its package, not even used one time. And I never ever thought that anything could ever take the place of my beloved Beauty Blender. I still love my Beauty Blender and I still think it's the best for applying foundation. But like, I've just been so in love with this that I haven't given my Beauty Blender any time. But I really, really like this. These Oeva brushes, like they just feel so Lux and they have weight to them and the bristles are so soft and the ferrule like it just this feels so luxurious when you're using it and you just have to barely graze the skin and it gives you a flawless finish there's no streaks it's not uneven it's just like a beautiful flawless finish soft and like it's so pretty so even brushes are so pretty like are they not the prettiest brushes because I think they're the prettiest brushes this next favorite is a brow gel. This is the L'Oreal Paris Brow Stylist Plumper Brow Gel Mascara. If you watched my brow routine, which I did in November, November, December, I did a brow routine. I was using Revlon Brow Fantasy. Wasn't in love with it. It was like kind of indifferent to me. I really like this though. And I think the main thing that I really love about this is the brush. It's kind of like this mini cone. So it's really easy to get really nice precision to really shape out the arch of the brow, the front of your brow. You can really get like that tiny, tiny tip of the brush and pick exactly where you want to put the product. It has little fibers in it, so they do extend the brow and make them look plumper. The formula of the gel actually plumps up the hairs itself, and then the fibers kind of extend and do add to the plumpness of the brow. If you're not careful, you can make your eyebrows look a little bit too spidery, like especially along the edges, because those fibers do their job. They extend whatever they attach themselves to, and if you do a little bit too much, your eyebrows can look a little bit wooly almost, so you want to be a little bit careful and practice with it. I honestly love it, so if you're looking for a new brow gel and you're looking for one from the drugstore, then that's one that I really do recommend. A new favorite lip liner, I'm gonna, oh guys, okay, I'm gonna really try and not have any mauve favorites for February. I'm really gonna try and not buy a mauve lipstick. 
but I caved and I bought Whirl by MAC. It's the MAC lip liner, Whirl. Everybody had it in their 2014 favorites, so I was like, I need to get it too, and look how much I've already used this month. Like, it's, MAC lip liners are, I've used a significant amount of this is what I'm trying to say. It's a really pretty mauve lip liner. There's nothing else to say about it other than it's a really gorgeous mauve shade. It's kind of pathetic. My favorite lipstick is also a mauve shade. I realize that I'm ridiculous and every month I have a favorite mauve shade, but I can't help myself. It's just like some people really like nudes and some people really like pinks and reds and I really like mauves and it's Buxom Dolly and this one right here is the full on lipstick. It's in the little pen form. This is honestly the perfect mauve. The most perfect mauve. And so I have it in every form that it comes in. What do you want from me? I love mobs. It comes in two <laughs> glosses and then I have the, uh, the lipstick. And yeah, I don't know. They're just, it's so perfect. Like this, this is my favorite mauve shade. And now that I look at my mauve lipstick collection, I'm like, we might have a problem. We might have a problem. I have a favorite winter accessory for you guys, and it is my fur trapper hat. My dad got this for me, and he was like, you're probably not going to wear it. You're probably going to think it's dorky and it's not cool. And I was like, oh my god, no. I have wanted one of these. I just didn't know what they were called. But um, my dad, like, went to... My dad played hockey in high school and, like, lived up in Minnesota. And so, apparently, this is, like, what a lot of people in Minnesota wear. I know this isn't going to be everybody's style, but I think it's so cute. It's so warm. I love it. And I've seen pictures of Beyonce wearing fur trapper hats, so don't you try and tell me that they're dorky, because I don't think they're dorky. And even if this was dorky, I would still love it. I don't usually buckle it. Um, I just like it like this. It keeps my ears warm. I'm, I sleep in this hat sometimes. <laughs> I really do sleep in this hat sometimes, because... It's so cozy, it's so furry and warm and soft. I'll leave it on for a second because I'm going to talk to you guys about my unfavorites of the month. And I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like I'm the minority saying that these are my unfavorites because so many people loved these and it's the Rimmel Provocalypse. If you wear them multiple days in a row, they are so drying. Like these are drying as a mofo and I know that a lot of lip products that are long wearing are really drying but I don't have that problem with my Stila liquid lipstick and they crack my lips and they would kind of like bunch up in the corners of my mouth and form this like weird ugly gross looking goo again don't have that problem with any other lip, long wearing lip products that I had so I had to attribute it to these I still might use one for a Valentine's Day makeup tutorial but my tip to you is only wear it on Valentine's Day don't wear it multiple consecutive days in a row. And then I have two non-beauty related favorites that are like TV shows and stuff like that. If you guys would like a non-beauty related favorites video at the end of every month, I would totally be into that because I'd love to talk about books, movies, food, random things that aren't beauty related. Like this hat would be in a non-beauty related favorites video. Anyway, Gone Girl is the first one. <laughs> this is my first non-beauty related favorite. The book and the movie. I bought the book and I bought the movie. If you saw the movie and loved it, then you need to read the book because it is ten times more twisted. David Fincher did an awesome job with the film. I love David Fincher though, so I'm really biased because I think that David Fincher can't do anything wrong and I love David Fincher. Like, I love David Fincher. I love him a lot. I think all of his films are beautiful. But the book is also really well, real well, well, is really well written and it's really really good. It keeps you on edge for a very long time. Second uh, non-beauty related favorite is also a TV show, so it's kind of like a what? So it's not kind of like a book or a movie, but it's Friends. Friends is on Netflix now, and I feel like Friends is uniting the internet. Everybody is talking about Friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like everybody's watching Friends, and it's super exciting to be watching Friends while everybody else is. My favorite character is Chandler. If you're watching Friends, then you should leave a comment down below and tell me who your favorite character is. I'm on season four. I think it's so funny. Like, I am always laughing at Friends. I always watch a few episodes every day. It's Lisa, Courtney, and Jennifer are so cute in the 90s. They're still beautiful now, but I'm just saying, like, they're so cute in the 90s, and I love it. I love the 90s fashion. Like, yes, I've been loving Friends, and that's pretty much 
it. That's the end of my favorites video. Uh, if you guys have any questions about any of the products that I mentioned, then leave them down below. Come follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Leave some comments down below so that we can talk to each other. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.